Okay, everyone, we're going to wait for a couple of minutes. Okay. Just reminding my son that we're actually live. <laughs> okay, so we'll just give it a couple of minutes just to wait for people to join. And um, welcome everyone, because I know that um, a lot of new parents are quite anxious at this time of year because you've got the CAF form coming up. And I remember being in that situation and you just want to do the right thing. And there are so many things that you're thinking about. Hi, Ms. Delvey. Nice to say hello in the comments. You can write in the comments. Some people have sent in some questions, so I'm going to go through some of those questions as well. But of course, you can write in the comments and ask anything that you'd like to ask, and we'll answer as best as we can. I did comment today and said that I'll I'll talk to Sab. I want to thank her for giving us the opportunity to have this space to just help each other, and perhaps um, another we can arrange another one where there's more children from different grammar schools because I've I've taught quite a few, tutored quite a few, as you know, I tutor, um, and it's just really helpful to get a child's perspective who's been through the school, done some years. So I'm going to introduce my son. Um, I'm asking, people are asking what's the link to see the class. Okay, so forgive me um, if I seem a little bit distracted. I'm guessing messages from my phone as well. So I'll be trying to just message those at the same time, okay? Hi, Sabre. I hope I'm saying people's names correctly. Um, forgive me if I'm not, I'll try my best. Um, you're welcome, Saba. Okay, so um, I'll let my son just introduce himself first. If you want to come a bit closer. Hi, my name is Ty. I'm in year 11 of Winston School. So this is my fifth year and my GCSE year. Um, obviously, I went through the 11 plus process as, um, as your typical will be. And uh, Wilson's was my... Um, my first choice and where I wanted to go. Okay, so so that's, that's my son, that's my disclaimer. All right, hi to you both. Thank you, Trevini. Um, okay, right, so the, we've got a number of questions and I'm hoping that Ty will be able to shed some light on what it's like to actually attend a school like Wilson's, which is incredibly hard to get into. Now, you, there are, we've got a mixture of parents, I know, some people who were just starting out on their journey and thinking about the grammars and trying to get an idea of what it's like to be at a grammar. Is the process actually worth it? Once you get an offer or you get the eligibility, you've achieved that, your children have gone through um, the process. Hi, I Educate Centre, lovely to have you on board. Uh, Nadia. Nada, lovely to have you on board. All right, so once your children have actually um, done their exams, all that hard work, and you've got you've got to the point where you are now eligible, you're at the point where you're trying to fill out that CAF and listing your schools in the order of preference. That's quite separate. I'm not going to spend too much time on doing that. You guys know, or you might not know, that I sat on education appeals. I have a lot of experience dealing with the CAF form, dealing with parents after. Um, having filled out the CAF form, dealing with appeals, but that's quite separate to today, which is just to give you a feel of what it's like to be in a school if you're at that point where you're trying to make a decision. Especially, I live in Croydon, South London, so my local schools are the Sutton Grammars and London Independents. Um, I do tutor kids for over the county line, so into Kent and as far as field now as Yorkshire because I teach online. But um, this will be primarily focused towards those Sutton schools, um, although it'll give you an insight into what it's like to be at a super selective grammar school. 
And I had a conversation earlier today where somebody was asking me, what's the difference between a super, super selective school and um, a super selective grammar and a selective gamma? We had a bit of a discussion on it, but, um, but ultimately the distinction is in the rigor it takes to get in. A super selective just means that the, the competition is a little bit more fierce purely because of the sheer volume of applicants. OK, so therefore it raises the bar all round in terms of being able to get into some schools where they have no catchment criteria. There's no boundary you need to be in like Wilson's means that anybody from far afield can um, apply to do the exam, which is a good thing in a way. But then it increases the competition. All right. So when you get a seat at one day school, you know that you have fought off fierce competition. OK, that's all. You're ultimately going to be studying the same curriculum like you would anywhere else. OK, and um, they don't go into set year seven and start off with university degree level courses. And Ty's going to tell you a bit more about that. OK, so like I said, um, you can ask questions um, in the chat, but I'm going to be running through the questions that I've had earlier on. And hopefully by answering them, those questions, it will cover any any questions you have now so I've got a question from Madhavi I believe my son qualified for all three Sutton schools uh, duh, duh, duh. I'd like to hear what options does the school have for children that are not keen in football um well personally I mean firstly for football there's like eight schools and seven you could do but then also there's badminton rugby cricket um table tennis there's a lot of variety of sports so just because you don't like football you don't enjoy it as much doesn't mean that you're going to be limited in any way and i think uh your child will be able to find something that uh he does enjoy and so i don't mean you should worry about um it, a sport just being limited to football as to put yeah and um those are the sports but if your child isn't interested in any of the sporting offers that they have there is a great range of other extracurricular activities there is chess is yeah there? there's chess there's loads of clubs like uh 50 clubs probably that they run um so uh you've got music ensembles uh you've got chess um kids can start their own clubs i know there's like uh almost pokemon clubs that some people do uh but there's you, you will not be there's loads of stuff to society so debating uh history society philosophy and ethics society and so there's definitely stuff which you can find and your child will be interested in yeah so there is of, of course sporting but there is a wide range of interest and like my son says societies and of course if a young person wants to have an, or has an idea for a club, then he is encouraged to take it to the school to set up a club, okay? All right, um, can I just check that everybody can hear me okay and can hear Ty well? Because if you can't, just put it in the comments if we need to speak a little bit clearer or get closer to the microphone um, at all, okay? All right, so I'm gonna move on to the next question now. Um, Okay, so we've got a message for Sabre. I hope that I've said your name correctly. Uh, what is the expectation of the school for the children to attend after school activities or clubs? There's a few questions you've got there, Sabre. So I'm gonna try and answer the first one and then move on to the next. Okay, so what is the expectation of the school for the children to attend after school activities or clubs? Uh, you don't have uh, so literally just do what you can find which is uh, interesting there's no pressure from the school in any way so it's just just do your lessons and that's fine yeah so there is choice there's the autonomy to make that choice there isn't an expectation from the school that you have to be included or involved there is encouragement from the school for you to be involved in extracurricular activities so as parents, we'll get newsletters, um, which echoes what, we can't hear your son properly, so move your chair closer. Okay, thank you for that. We'll try and repeat 
anything that we've said. So, um, both yeah, if you can just let us know if you didn't quite hear what my son said, and we'll try and just go over that, okay? All right. So, there isn't any pressure to to join any extracurricular activities. Like Ty said, you could literally go to school, just do your classes and go home. But they do encourage you because they want to help to develop a rounded student. And they want children to try things that perhaps they have never met or just try out new skills. So they do encourage them to try them out, but it is 100% at the child's volition. So they can decide what they want to be involved in. If they want to try something and drop out, perfectly fine. Okay. I hope that's answered that. Um, is the amount of homework in the early years manageable? So we're talking, I'm assuming, year seven, eight in the lower school, year seven, eight, and nine. Yes, in the lower years? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I don't remember getting that much homework, to be honest. And Teachers are never going to set you homework, which is due for the next day. So you're always going to, you're always going to have at least two days, essentially, to complete the homework. And I, even in uh, middle school now, in uh, year 10 and year 11, I've only had homework due for the next day a couple of times, maybe, because teachers understand that you have a lot going on. And so teachers aren't going to add additional pressure onto you. But I'll say for the early years, there's not much homework. But if in comparison to other schools, there might be more, but it's definitely manageable. Okay, so I hope that helps. I'm just going to go to Candice. Candice, you've asked, I have heard there is weekly testing to make sure kids are on top of their studies. Is that true from your seven? Well, I know we get tested a lot. It's about two tests in every subject per term. So what that normally means is that by, so if you're in year seven, by the end of your first half term, so by your sixth, fifth, fifth and sixth week, you're going to be essentially getting um, tested eventually um, but for year seven I know that there's no mocks at the end of the year um, unlike other years uh, but compared to other schools there is um, testing but it's after a while personally I get used to it and lots of people by I would say year eight year nine you're used to having a test regularly okay so I hope that answered that they do get tested but um so once every six weeks or so, so twice a term, so there's about 11, 12 weeks in a term. So you'll get a topic review halfway through that. So you get, end up getting two, and the children do get quite used to it. Um, some of those tests, tests as well would be what we call low risk. Um, so it's just a review of the topics and to get into that habit of reviewing topics, um, you know, and um, yeah, so the, it's developing habits rather than really making any measure of the child's capability of performance okay um and yes how how is the pastoral care so what is this pastoral care so um pastoral care if anybody is unfamiliar is to do with uh, looking after the child's welfare needs you know making sure that the child is um mentally healthy is feeling good and they and somewhere to go to so i'll let Ty say a bit more about that uh, yeah, so from year seven, uh, you're told where to go if you have any problems. So you have you have two form tutors from year seven to eight, and you're um, told that you can go to them at any time if you have any problems. You also, of course, have your head of year, um, who's normally quite friendly, so you can go to them for any problems. Um, I know that on the website, you can report a concern if you think it's more something that uh, you don't want your own name to be in or something else which you know is happening. And there is also in the school well, a well-being lead. Um, so, for example, I know it's Miss Banner, who's a teacher, and you can go into her office at any time or in the mornings if you have any problems. So I would say the pastoral care is quite good. Yeah, and one of the things for parents as well is they're always alerting us about the child's um, well-being, where we can get support, not only in the school, but the local community. So for Wilson's is based in Sutton, and so they will send up links and um, times and support services that we can access um, in, the, in that borough, okay? 
for the support. So the school, I feel, try their very best. Like Ty said, they actually have a well-being lead in the school, which is actually very praiseworthy. So they see that it is important enough to have somebody responsible for the well-being of the students. That's their sole job responsibility. Um, so they do a lot of initiative to promote well-being, and we get a lot of that information in the school newsletter. OK, so I hope that helps. Um, I'm going to just, just take um, through Benny. I hope I said that right. Um, you, you've asked, does any of those quest results define any selection of subjects for GCSE or is that used for additional support? And I think you're asking that question in relation to the testing that Ty spoke about, um, the two per term. Do any of them define? Certainly not in the early years of year seven. It's much more for um, developing good revision and study habits and reviewing a topic. So it isn't in any way um, leading to your GCSE results. The teachers aren't taking that information and making a judgment, an academic judgment about whether or not what subjects you should do. When they do their formative assessments, so when they do their big mocks at the end or the end of year, so they don't do the end of year testing at year seven, but when they do those, then those bits of information, that data is collated and used to um, used to um, decide yeah, for some uh, subjects. So, uh, so for so for GCC subjects such as computing or um, DT ones, which you haven't, uh, you have to be um, tested, and that test will be made clear when. And so, if you did well enough, then you would be able to take it. ET there was also a test, but they're not going to um, look at all your uh, test results from, let's say, year seven to year eight to see whether you're allowed to uh, um, pick an additional GCSE. Okay, so hopefully that's helped. Yes, just a reminder, because Monica's asked, is this Wilson's? My son attends Wilson's, okay? So he's going to be speaking from, of course, that um, perspective as a student there. Um, Wilson's, like we said, um, is in the London Borough um, of Sutton. And um, yeah, all right. So we're just going to give a perspective there. But, you know, although we're talking about Wilson's, it's just an insight into what it's like at a grammar. They're not going to be vastly dissimilar in terms of the delivery of the curriculum and the content and how they test and review their, their the children there. OK. Um, OK, so I've got a question here before it goes away. Monica, secondly, please advise on thoughts on regarding commute time. OK, it could take up to an hour from where I live to Wilson's. Should I consider a closer grammar like Olav, which is half the commute time? OK, this is a matter of opinion. OK, um, and everybody will have a different perspective on this. Um, I know Olav's. My son, Ty, sat the Olav's um, test as well. He got through to the second round. As you know, Olav's does not does not produce the, the second round results before you fill in the calf. Um, but I wanted it as a backup. I knew that I was always going to choose my closest school. OK, so once I had a handful of good choices, I was going to pick the school closest to me because that was logical for me. And what was um, what I considered was that I didn't want the my son's school experience to have any hindrances or be any more challenging um, than it is with adding a commute time on it. So for me, the shorter commute time was important and I would have gone to Olav's or chosen a school further distance, but then I was prepared to drive my child to school and pick him up. So the reason I picked a school that was a little bit further away from me was because I had already made the decision and the provision to be able to get him there and pick him up so that he doesn't have a very, very long commute. Now, I know that's not possible for everyone, but that's what it would have taken for me to allow him to go to a school that was a little bit further away. Now, I know children, my middle son went to independent, and I know that children um, get take the training. So I'm not making a judgment about the modes of transportation and the distance that people have to go through. 
And that's why I'm just starting this off with it's just um, an a, a opinion. So if I were if I had two good schools to choose, they're both great, Olaf's and Wilson's. I'd pick the one closest to me. But the what made my decision closest as well was because it's not just a decision for me; it's a decision for your your son. It's a decision for your child. So even though I'm talking from Wilson's point of view and from a boy's point of view, the girls' schools, this will be equally relevant. Um, what do they like about the school? Is there anything? Because I know when I went took Thai around to the school, what were one of the things that you liked in particular? It was the... Uh, you liked the cadets and the they had a CCF there, Combined Cadet Force. And they, um, at which in actual fact, they twin with Wallington girls. Mm -hmm. So Wilson's acts a lot with Wallington girls. They do quite a few extracurricular activities with Wallington girls. So the girls are part of the cadet force. So if anybody's considering Wallington girls, that's good. Um, and also what he really liked was Wilson's had a music specialism. Um, and so they have a great big orchestra. They have a whole... Um, in primary school, we have the, um, what's it called again? The music starter program? Sound start. They have the sound start where every, I think, yes, yeah, three child is given an instrument to play. And from that sound start, um, my son continued with the cello. He plays other instruments as well. But what he was very interested in was the fact that at Wilson's, they gave every student in year seven, Every student in year seven, they have a music program. And so every student gets an instrument to play. Do you have a choice about which instrument? Yeah, you, I remember in your first week, you got to try and actually play every single instrument for that ACE school. And then you got to choose uh, which ones you like. And then the teacher would decide if they saw any potential there. And then you, you would be able to play, you would get free lessons for. Uh, a whole year or something. Yeah, so that you is quite unique to Wilson's. They've funded free music lessons for the entire year seven. Um, and that's because they, um, that's their specialism, but they fund it for a whole year. So we don't pay any music lessons cost. If after they, they have a great big ensemble at the end and a recital at the end and a performance and all the parents are invited in, and then if at the end of the year they'd like to continue, then at that point you start paying for your lessons, okay? Um, so yes, the answer, the question, do what, uh, any other reason for picking Wilson's? That that was the reason. It was the fact, the fact that my son went to the school, he particularly liked the music specialism they offered and the fact that they had the CCF cadets there. And Wilson's has a very uh, unique position in the CCCF cadets. Um, they were one of only... How many schools was it for? Speak up. We were the only state school to have uh, present two cadets at the Queen's funeral. Yeah, so it's actually quite an elite CCF there. And if you wanted, if that's something that your son is interested in, they have a lot of opportunity there for your son to be involved and to progress if that's what he's interested in. Okay. Um, if you have the choice of two great work, okay, all right. Uh, what do you have to do to prepare for year seven if you have gone through the second round of Wilson? Well, I mean, that's a, a question from Sue Sin. I hope I'm saying that okay. What do you have to do to prepare for year seven? We did zero preparation for year seven. Yeah. <laughs> we did zero preparation. Year five is tough. Um, the children work nonstop. Some of them work through year four. Um, by the time they finish their SATs in year six, that's a breeze for them because they have covered the year key stage two curriculum and gone a little bit beyond. Um, and so after that, they have a well-deserved break. Okay, so they have a well-deserved break. And for year seven as a teacher, what will happen is the school does its only its own baseline assessment. So even though they've done a test and they've come in saying they're, they're, they're at this position and they know because the school like Wilson's is selective, once the, the students are actually in front of the teachers, the teachers do their own, own ongoing measurements. OK, so there's nothing that you specifically need to do for year seven. I would suggest just give them a break, let them go into school get settled in the school, 
find their way around the school, get used to this big new timetable with lots of different teachers and moving around. There's a whole lot that they need to get used to as a new student in a new environment to just allow them that time to get familiar. The schools are gonna do a very good job with teaching and learning. Um, okay, they're teaching and learning. So if you want to do some reading, you will usually have some information sent to you as a prospective student um, in the term or just before the children start. And you will have a reading list, especially from the English department. So perhaps if you want to start off doing some reading, then that's a good place to start. Um, but nothing too specific for year seven. Let them get in and learn it all and begin again. All right. Um, let's just see what we've got. I'm not sure if this is relevant. Da, 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 prevent. Wilson chose da, 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 Sutton Grammar chose Wallington didn't publish how many. Uh, gone through second round with your previous experience please advice what is the chance that a child wouldn't get any in any of the three schools local to Sutton child wouldn't get a place to sit slightly off topic in any of these three schools um, yeah you can pass all three and not be offered I don't want to blow the wind out of anybody's sails it is possible um, it just depends on the ranking and where you've placed on those schools but I, it is possible usually if you pass all three you're going to get an offer that's in my experience okay um you're going to get an offer all right so just stay positive um through benny if you want to discuss further probably perhaps outside of the session we can talk a little bit more okay that was said, um i had wilson Curl along with QE, we moved from South to North London so that he could attend QE. We didn't want a long commute time and even after moving heavy traffic, it's yeah. Anything more than that would be personally not possible for us. Yes, uh, an extra career, yeah. And I'd echo what Sabba said there. Um, in the winter months especially, um, I don't drive my son to school. I offer him lifts sometimes, he refuses it. Um, but sometimes he's bringing instruments he plays it does music other children do things i know especially um so when he's doing sometimes he has to be at school for an 8 a.m lesson all right so before school starts now i don't know how he would manage that if he was coming from quite a distance but there are some things that don't you don't you can't plan for you don't know they're going to crop up until later on so where he has peripatetic music teachers that come into the school uh, they try to fit in as many students as possible and sometimes those lessons take place before the actual school day so you want to consider those little things as well you know if you have to do something really early before the school starts or if you want to do something quite late um, how does that work when you have a longer commute time um, and it can be quite anxious when they're in year seven and you're quite right when they're a little bit older you're not too concerned but when they're very new around the school and they've got this big heavy bag and this little blazer and they look like this, you do worry for them. Okay, so just be careful of that commute. Okay, let's just go back to um, the questions. Okay, so I think Shirley, you've said, um, thank you so much. My name is Shirley, just to hear your experience. We have attended the open days and understand the academic side of school wanted to get more of a feel of the school community, pastoral care, extramural versus academic balance. So I think we've talked a little bit about that, Shirley. So hopefully that has um, given you an idea. Um, as a parent, um, what I see is the school is very involved. They have a broad range of offers on. So I've never got the sense that they're just pressuring academia. I've never, because my son is interested or is involved in um, music, of course, I see the performances from the music. But there are children who are um, on football teams or sports teams. Um, they do rugby, they do all the other sports, cricket, um, they do badminton. He listed them at the start. And so you'll get this information in the school newsletter which is produced weekly, but also they attend events on the circuit. You know, they, they participate in um, fixtures on the circuit. So there is quite a lot of things to do outside of the classroom. Um, my son does photography. That's because it's an interest of his. The school doesn't run a club or anything, do they? The school doesn't run a club, but he is able, because he's interested in photography, to get the opportunity to take the pictures for school events. 
and that's happened just now. They um, just this year, hasn't it? So he takes the pictures like when they're having what kind of things. So like the uh, the other day they had a a battle with the band thing, which is a music thing, and so I was taking pictures, which is now on the website. So, yeah, and so that was a unique opportunity afforded to my son because he had an interest. And so in the same way, if your child has an interest and you're developing a relationship with the school, so not me, um, but my son is, um, getting to know other teachers, being involved in other um, networks within the school, then they somebody will have a conversation with somebody else. You know how networking works. And then they'll say, OK, I'm going to talk to my friend Ty um, and see if they have a word with Mr. So-and-so and see if you can take the pictures. OK, the school also has their performances, their plays which we really missed in lockdown, but they have their senior performance play, so which are the senior years, 10, 11? 9, 10, 11. 9, 10, 11? 9, 10, 11. Yeah, so the, you have a senior production uh, every uh, spring, so in February, which is 9, 10, 11, and 6 form, and a junior production in year 7 and 8. Yeah, so then you get to, and that's open to everybody. Um, we encourage it to raise funds for the schools. So you pay a nominal fee for the tickets. Um, and there's a thriving PTA, of course, that raise money for building of classroom. Um, at the moment, they've had, they actually have um, children who are, will do bike rides, just to, lots, lots of things for fundraising for the schools. So if you're particularly got this fundraising school I know any of the grammar schools will enjoy having you as part of the parent body because these are state schools they do not get a lot of funding so maybe that's something that a parent can offer in terms of skill set for the school they will always appreciate fundraising um, I've got the Derby what is start time of school and finish time if a child attends extracurricular activity so your normal start yeah. time so registration is 8.30, which means you have to be sitting down in your class ready by 8.30. So I personally, you can normally get to school, I'd say, latest 10 past 8, uh, maybe 15 past 8 a.m. Uh, normal finish for, for every day is 3.30. On, on a Friday, as I'm in year 11, I finish at 1, but for other years, that's uh, 3, 3.05. If you have a club like sport, I remember when I did rugby, that would be about an hour and a half. So I would finish at 5 p.m. Um, and any CCF? Uh, CCF goes to about 5.45 and even to 6, sometimes later 6.30 p.m. Uh, it, it, it is uh, lengthy, uh, but obviously that's all if you want to do it. But yeah. Yeah. So it can be quite late if you're doing things like CCF. Yeah, 645, 645? 5, 545, 545 normally. normally. Um, I'm in the parents group, but what will happen is you'll see parents making like a WhatsApp group when they pass, they're really thrilled, they're very, very excited and they want to connect. And I did the same when Ty got into Wilson's, I created a year seven uh, WhatsApp group um, for, you know, so that everybody could just share their anxieties and, and so on and help each other. But what happens is the school organizes a WhatsApp group as well. So every year group has a WhatsApp group and the PTA run this so that they share information and they will remind us. Yeah, they will remind us um, about upcoming events, et cetera, et cetera, in that WhatsApp. So, for instance, in the WhatsApp now, we're discussing revision ideas, um, research on revision because the boys are doing their exams or they've got mocks coming up in November. So that's what we've got a very active WhatsApp group. So sometimes I'll come to Ty and I'll say, oh, you know, um, this conversation is going on in the WhatsApp group. And he's like, oh, my goodness, what are you mums up to? So there's mums and dads in it, by the way. But um, so, so there is a community within the school with the each year group. So you won't be alone in terms of your concerns and, you know, you'll be supported there. OK. Um, my son's interest in photography yeah I've said that I'd like to commission him to do another event I'm having but he didn't seem too keen right so Monica yes the clubs can get quite late but remember that's just if your son or your daughter is 
depicts those clubs, you know? And I think one of the things to probably just get in touch with whoever runs the clubs is to find out a little bit about the club, what time they're likely to finish. With the CCF, I had no idea it would be this late. And when we're in the WhatsApp group, us mums are saying, my goodness, when are they coming out? They're meant to come out. They're not out yet. You'll have those conversations while we're sitting in cars waiting for them. You'll have conversations about children who have dropped their keys, children who are on the train and the parent can't find them. The phone is off because the battery's died. And, and then later on, oh, yes, he's got home safe. But you do have a network of parents. You know, you're talking to your parents. Right. OK. Um, Diksha, is there much difference academically between the schools and what's your view between St. Olabs versus Tiffin Boys? Well, I don't have personal experience of Tiffin. I've tutored students who have then gone off to Tiffin, okay? Um, but to be able to um, honestly compare them in terms of um, academically, what's your view between St. Olabs versus Tiffin? What criteria do you want me to contrast or compare? Um, maybe if you can just say a little bit more about that, Dickshaw, if anybody else in the group can add something into the chat to compare that. But, um, yeah, I know both of them. I don't know if you've visited both the schools, because I think when you visit the schools, you get a feel for the atmosphere of the schools as well. I know Tiffin quite well. I know Tiffin as an extracurricular in terms of uh, not attending it, but taking my, my son there to play football. Um, using the um, school's facilities and St. Olav's is very, very green. I liked it particularly just aesthetically about the school. Um, St. Olav's has a little bit of a history. Um, you can find that out from yourselves. They had a little bit of a history um, where they were setting their A-level criteria too high, um, which is quite unusual. So they were expecting children to finish off with A's after year 12 in order to carry on the second year, which is too high. Um, and so they were uh, releasing a lot of children after the end of year 12, which was actually illegal to do. Um, and so they got in a bit of bother about that. That's in their history. That's in their past. Um, there's been a new head and everything now, um, new SLT and everything like that. So that is what happened historically in the school. Uh, but I have it hasn't put people off applying for it. And you're still going to get a stellar um, education. So sorry, I can't be more precise about comparing them. If you ask me something um, a little bit more precise about that, I might be able to go in or certainly find out for you. And one of the things that I'm going to suggest to Saba is to have um, something a bit more organised, just like this, but with two T's from other schools, like Olaz, like Wilson's, like um, Wallington and Sutton. OK. Um, and Susu has said Olive's A-level is better than Tiffin. If you only measure the schools on their results, um, a lot of parents do that. You can just measure it on the results. Um, for me personally, because I'm a teacher, the results show a aspect of a school. It's not the complete story. Um, it, they show a aspect. For me, I'd measure, I've said it before earlier on, progress eight is really about the journey a child makes, so how much progress they make while they're in the class. And like I've said, most grammar schools don't do so well with that because the schools already, the children come in at this high bar and they, they stay on it. So a bright student getting A's, okay, is expected. A student, however, in a comprehensive that comes in struggling and then manages to reach top grades, that's a greater um, progress, okay? All right, so really I'm looking at what else the school has to offer that will then help my child to reach their potential, academically, of course, but in other areas, the opportunities too that they have on offer. Okay, I'm just going to check through if there are any other questions. Um, I think I've got um, for Charlie, da, 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 past Henry and Abarnett's schools, visited schools, commute from Welling, da, da, da. Townley grammar is not on the top list. Right, okay, so you like Townley and you like the infrastructure, the clubs. Those are all very important factors when you're deciding a school because your child has to actually live. That's their living, that's their second home. For the next, how long you got school? Seven years. Seven years. So 
it's not just looking at grades. It is really what the school environment and school life is like. So um, don't kind of under or devalue all the other things, the soft things that the school has to offer. They really can make a difference between a child being healthy and happy, being in that environment, um, rather than just, you know, um, being quite focused on grades. So, but moving in those areas is a big challenge. So at the moment we have two choices, blessed grammar. Right, yeah, okay. So again, that move, I know it's really difficult for parents. Um, personal, it's a personal decision, whether or not in terms of moving to an area. Um, personally, I was not prepared to move anywhere. This is my home. I'm not prepared to sell house and go anywhere. So it had to work around where we live. Okay, um, but I know some people have the flexibility where they can move to the area. So really, you have to make the decisions that are best for your family that will work. Because if it's not working for the family, it's going to then have rippled down to your child. So you've got to kind of consider how that fits in. Okay, um, it would be great to get the same level of info for Esther. But yeah, yeah, I, I I definitely want to do this, and I had considered just. Um, contacting a couple of my students for Sutton Grammar and Wallington. Um, I just didn't get time to do it. It's easy to pull Ty here because, you know, he's in the house. But I, I will ask Sab about doing another one and just getting those students to join me, perhaps, um, yeah, via Zoom maybe, or just to join me and see if we can have another session like this because I know that it's um, helpful for the parents. Right, okay. Um, the Sheila, my son has passed. Wanted to know, yeah, journey again. Okay. Just started preparing our son for 11 plus, looking for school. We are in Warwickshire, so what should I consider? Okay. Um, Bienish, um, you've asked the question, what should I consider? Um, I, that's, that's quite general for me. That's why I'm kind of trying to struggling to find where to start. Um, looking for a school I mean when you're looking for any school for your child um, you want to think about of course the teaching and learning but you want to look at where they're going to be if you can get a visit to the schools or even a virtual a visit around the schools just to see just seeing and visiting gives you quite a feel for what the environment is like uh, but go on some forums and see if you can find out a little bit from past parents or current parents what their experience has been like, okay? Um, school reputation does matter, but it can change, okay? So you can have a school that's had a great reputation academically or a great reputation pastorally, and it changes with the personnel, all right? So um, that's one's a little bit vague, Beamish. If you be a bit more precise, I'll be able to um, address your point. Okay, um, very keen to understand the difference between the three Sutton schools academically and sports-wise is looking for a football bias. Right, okay. What do you think about the sport in your school? He's going to be quite frank here. You're not going to name anybody. Uh, but uh, I think it's uh, I think it's all right. Uh, it's not the best uh, sport, meaning skill-wise. Uh, you still have fun doing it. Um, so for rugby, personally, you know, we would lose almost just over half our games. We would what? Lose. lose. <laughs> you know, but it was still fun. Um, I know that recently they started a, a sports scholarship. So, for example, in year seven and year eight, there's some people who were just uh, who were um, quite skilled in sport. And so I know someone, so, for example, who's in year eight, and they were, you know, playing at one of the junior Wimbledons because of the sports scholarship. Um in terms of you know the the first teams, the first teams are quite good, but compared to maybe a comprehensive school, you might have uh, more uh, students with who are better sporty. Yeah. So I have another son who is very sporty. So Ty is a good uh, participant. He you enjoy it. He doesn't mind me saying it. Um, so my, my children both went to the local rugby club. Ty joined the rugby club at his school. Um, my son went to an independent school. You've got, you've got to understand about the grammars of a state run and state funded. 
they do not have the money to pay an ex-professional sporter, sport, you know, athlete to teach in their schools. Okay, they don't have that funding. If you want an expert level of sport, find a good club when you're going to grammar. Right, okay, so he's semi-pro, which is good luck for Wilson. But generally, it's, you know, it's just lucky if you get somebody who played sport at any level, all right? So it's just lucky. They can't buy them in like the private schools do, all right? So my other son went to a private school where sport was heavy, and that's why we particularly wanted him to go there, okay? Um, so they had the money to be able to get in the ex kind of um, New Zealand international, Australia international. They had the money to pay these people to come and align themselves in the school and get the, the boys on the big circuits, okay? Your local grammar school, no matter how wonderful they are academically, and they all offer a variety of sports. So you can still go there and play rugby, cricket, all your team sports, athletics. A lot of them now enter the school's athletics. So the borough will have um, an athletics competition. And if you're good at running, you'll be able to enter that, which is quite afford. It's quite, it's free actually. Um, but um, so they'll have the sports on offer, but the level of skill development, I know that at Wilson's when Ty started, you had just six formers helping out with the sports. OK, so you'd have your PE teacher and then you'd have older boys who were helping. Um, you're not going to get that in your independent school. You're going to have your professionals. OK, um, for your first team and your B team, you're going to have the professionals. And then even in the independent, as it goes down, then you'll you'll get the PE teacher to help or, you know, other assistants. OK, so sporting wise, if you're looking for sports in skill at a grammar, the main emphasis is academia. but you might have a school that has a particular reputation in a particular sport. Olavs has a great reputation for cricket. They do well on the cricket circuits. And so that's why when you're choosing your schools, lean towards the ones that interest you. You know, that school there might have that particular. I know that Wilson's wasn't particularly good at any sport, which is why, like Ty said, they have now initiated the sports scholarship because they would like to get some boys in who are good at sports so they can start winning. But like Ty said, he lost 50 percent of his rugby matches. He made the first team. And Ty will agree with me that perhaps if you were in a school that took rugby, you would never have made that first team. Right. Yeah. There's no way. But, you know, all right. So you don't, there's not that level of competition with the sport there, because depending on the cohort of students that are there, they might not be particularly interested in pursuing sporting and, you know, they drop it. So the last parents meeting that we had, they were encouraging the boys to carry on with their sport, to carry on with their extracurricular and not to drop it instead of study for, for the, in place of studying. All right. They made a big emphasis of that. And that was really in the understanding of it helps them mental well-being to have a release. Um, and sport does do that. It does distract you. It um, helps you to place your energy somewhere else. And so actually, when you're studying and you think that I'm going to do less, then actually you can take up more sports or do something that expends energy, something you enjoy my son goes out and he'll play the drums as well out in our little summer house. He goes out and we think, oh, that's good. He's getting it out. So, OK. All right. Um, I'm just going to go a little bit up. Any benefits over Wilson's, over Sutton, if you're happy? What kind of boy suit? So this is from Sabre, I believe. What kind of boy suits one from the other? One better than unfortunate. The Wilson's open day didn't include the boys. So I really couldn't feel the vibe. Sabre, I really understand that. Um, sometimes also when they, they used to have the boys because when I took time to go to the open day, it was the actual students that walked you around. And I think after COVID, they, obviously they couldn't do the parent season. And when they, when they could do the parent season, they just did it with just like a tour. Like it's like during or after school day. Yeah. So I think parents, they're not really getting the real feel for the school now since COVID. And my criticism is that 
They've kept a lot of things online and virtual now because it's easier for the schools. Um, I'd like to see them come back to the hustle and bustle of the parents' evening because you do get that sense. Usually you'd have a very timid year seven who's just about learning their way around the school, but <laughs> but they would be quite honest about anything that you ask them. So um, let's just go back to your question. I've talked so much, I can't remember what you asked. So what kind of boy suits one better than the other? It's a matter of press preference, um, Sabre. I'd say that in terms of my two Ts, um, some really prefer Sutton. They, 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 they live closer to the school. They, they've got friends that go to the school and they wouldn't have it. That's their number one. They, they wouldn't have it over any other. Um, when I went there, Sutton doesn't have its own playing field. It's some distance away. It's, it's like a city build. And so for me, I was attracted to the open fields of Wilson. So it's got quite a nice field. It's also got um, the Power League yeah, that their boys have. To, yeah, so 12 Astro football courts that the boys can go and play on during lunchtime. So it's accessible to them. Now, how many schools outside a private school have those sorts of facilities? So those kinds of things were what attracted me to that school as well. And I think it's quite impressive for the students looking on. But in terms of the, um, in terms of, um, the school, the boys themselves, you're going to be getting a great education wherever you go. So I wouldn't say that you have to have, be a particular type of personality to go to Wilson's and a different kind of personality to go to, to Sutton. Not at all, okay? Um, the schools are different in the way they run, but ultimately their ethos is generally the same. You know, they're working with bright children and they want to achieve the very best that those bright children have to give, okay? So... And go with what you feel is best for your child, what your child likes about that school. But don't worry about whether or not it's the kind of child to fit in to that particular school. There's not much between them. I would say that I've, at my, I've got three children. Um, out of my two sons, my son Ty suits Wilson's, okay? He's a grammar type student my, because... Um, he was quite capable and he's very self-driven. So he'll do the work, he'll take on board the testing and he'll do that. My middle son, and he'll be happy for me to say this in front of him, he, although he takes education quite seriously, he's off to Loughborough, he's done quite well, he would be sitting in the classroom looking outside on the pitch because that's where his heart is, okay? So a grammar school environment wasn't really going to have him thrive in it. OK, it wouldn't have been the best thing for him. All right. So rather than splitting hairs about the grammar schools, which are pretty much, you know, picking the same kind of cohort of students, you want to make that think that think that question I would apply to grammar schools versus comprehension versus a particular independent. And even then look at the, the school, the individual school and what it is about that school that can offer. All right. I hope that helps. Um, I'm just going to check any more questions. Um, what is the link to the class? Da, 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 da. Lots of people saying the link doesn't work. I hope that you've managed to join the group. So you just need to be in the group and be here. I haven't got any more questions, I don't think. Um, I'm just scrolling through to see if there are any questions. If anybody has any questions. You can post it now. Um, let me just have a look. Size of class? Uh, 32 in year seven. Uh, that's pretty normal for every class. Uh, I mean, as you go up into when it's GCC year, might, we might uh, go less. Some people leave. Um, but we have, so in some other subjects like for example, if you take music, there's, you know, you might have just like one class of 15, you're going to have smaller classes because less people have decided to take it. But yeah. Yeah. So you don't have smaller classes for your grammar school, because remember, they are just state schools. Your independent schools, my son, when he started, there were 14 in his class, independent school. Um, your grammar school is a state school it's, it's 30 in your class 32 okay um yeah that's it um do you have a ta in the classroom 
No, I mean, just... I mean, sometimes, I mean, I've had at once in one class before about three teachers sometimes because you might have a, like a, a training teacher or something and they're still, they've still got quite good knowledge so you can go for them to help and then you might have just have another teacher who might be helping another student. So, yeah. Yeah, so hopefully that's answered that. Okay, is there a high turnover of teachers? Uh, well. Wow. I don't, compared to other schools, it's quite low. Uh, you're normally, I think la last year, so from this year, last year to this year, this is the biggest turnover that I've seen uh, in my time, which was about maybe uh, eight teachers. But that's that was quite rare. Um, but normally it was just maybe three every year. Yeah, so you did have some teachers that will hang on in there that have been there. The longest teacher I know has been there for about 25 years. Yeah, so they do tend to hold on to their teachers a little bit longer. Um, it's schools that um, teachers actually want to teach in, but they have the same problems with STEM teachers. Okay. Um, uh, the same problems holding and finding, re, um, retaining science teachers. Um, that's no different. Um, it's a, you know, so they'll they'll struggle with science teachers. Um, you'll get teachers in, and it's a grammar school, but you you have to do a bit of that work. Um, Ty still having, um, he's still I'm a tutor. He has a science tutor um, to just uh, help along with the. Um, you know what you're not getting in school so you have to remember that the school can only do so much with the state of teachers and teaching um that they're working in okay um just, okay so i'm getting a flurry of questions now do you have a feel so this is lisa do you have a feel about how wilson's are with potentially neurodiverse children um i'm not sure ty will have a feel of that um but I think, well, you might have your opinions. I think that um, certainly the head teacher, certainly the head teacher um, is very forward thinking, very progressive, um, tries to widen the ways that um, you can learn as much as possible. Um, but I don't know in the classroom how much support they're getting, um, yeah. I have uh, there's a kid I know, and I speak to other children's. Uh, he's I he's told me himself, um, and he has help with. I think he's told me that he has ADHD, um, so I know he has problems just focusing. He's quite smart actually, um, so he has a teacher that has to come in and help him with some uh, some uh, just lesson help and stuff. Yeah, so they'll be, if they have a student that needs that help, then that will generally be um, a conversation between the school and the parents, of course, and, I'm, you know, we're hoping that they'll get that help. So like Ty said, he's given an example of that, and hopefully that will be reflected with who needs it. Um, he's saying, is that Mrs. Banks? I'm not yeah, sure. For 25 years. Uh, I don't know how long this has been there. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Burton has been there since the 90s. <laughs> right, okay. Right, okay, okay. So, um, does Wilson specialise in any subject like computer science? I heard some schools are specialised in some subjects. Um, they don't specialise in computer science. Their specialism is music um, for Wilson's. Well, maths and music. Are you talking? Sorry, yeah. They have a foundation math children with about 20, 30 classes, and there's quite a few uh, computers. So that's for math? Yeah. Okay, so I think they thought I didn't know that. Okay, all right. So let's just go back. Computer science, I heard. So they do, do they offer computer science? I don't think they do, do they? Uh, for GCSE? I know they offer, I think they do. Yeah, so they might, yeah. oh, they do offer computer science because I think in year eight, they choose their GCSE options, which yeah. is too early, I believe, but they choose their GCSE options and you have to be invited to take computer they, no, science. There's a, there's, a test. there's a test that you do. And if you oh, reach a certain aptitude, yeah, say it there back are, again. There were two tests. There was like a, 
uh, which is my uh, online one. and I did well on the, the written one. I'm not gonna like hundred percent, but I didn't do well on the other one. So I did, I wasn't able to take it as yeah. it. But I that's fine because now I'm hearing how hard it is, I don't regret it. <laughs> yeah, so he didn't get through to be able to take it as an option. All right, but obviously children are and he hears that is quite difficult, but I don't know. Okay. Um, right. So what happens if you can't keep up? So Kate, what happens if you can't keep up with academic work? Do you get kicked out? They would be dragged over hot coals if they were to kick out students like that or ask the students to leave. I'm a teacher. I know these things happen behind closed doors. Um, I don't believe that is the case at Wilson's. You've started off your class. And pretty much everybody you started with yeah. is still in the class. He's in year 11 now. Um, no, there's support for learning. Generally, what happens um, is if the children are of concern when they give their little reports, then the of concern means that they are offered um, intervention, which are workshops and clinics at lunchtime, generally. Yeah. Uh I think in year seven and eight, it's not much of an issue because it's not teacher to come to them. Uh, if you are struggling, then your a teacher will realise that and make sure you get more help. But for in terms of year nine, uh, so I know, for example, German, there was one after school they might do for a bit. And then in terms of year 11, there's uh, intervention. So that means maybe after school. So, for example, I know science. There's one, so I normally go home at 1 p.m., but some people stay for the period five to have science help. Yeah, and some of those will be um, optional, so in, and some of them will be invited and you must attend. <laughs> so when I had that last parents meeting, um, just to see how they were getting on, um, if he hadn't performed so well in a particular measurement, particular test, then they would say, okay, we're going, you're going to get an email, and this email means it's not optional, but you do need to come into school over the half term and attend these workshops. So and those workshops are designed to support their learning and give them that extra that they need if they're um, falling a little bit beneath what um, where they are expected to be, okay? So, um, okay, I hope that's answered everything. Are boys so disturbed that all your friends are? Oh, oh so Kate, I think I missed that. Are boys so, do you mean distributed? Like, uh, so that, that all your friends are everywhere, not local. Oh, do you, do you, are you asking Kate that because the boys come from wherever, because there's no catchment, that your friends aren't your local neighborhood friends? Is that what you're asking? Because if you are, um, I can only speak from what I see of Ty, that he may have um, boys that come from afar, but there are a great many that come that are local. And Both so, my friends, speak up. All my, I'll take inner circle friends and I'll take them to uh, live closer to the person. Yeah. And we have quite a lot of the boys over um, very frequently. Um, they come over, Ty had a sleepover. There were how many? Eight. So there were eight, eight boys, there were more. Ten. Yeah, there were 10 boys here. They were clearly all local boys. Um, so there are going to be, even though there are uh, lots of boys from further afield, there are lots of other boys that are close. So they will still have local friends. Okay, uh, Monica, do you think the head's forward vision translates throughout the school? He was particularly impressive at the open day. The most actually even versus the head of the local independent schools. Is this carried throughout the school and the subject teachers? Or as we found with the 11 plus, do we have to do a lot of external work organize ourselves regarding exams? Well, I'm not that involved regarding Ty's learning and his exams. I am, the school is taking care of it really. My involvement is the information the teachers have given me and the conversations that I've had with my son about, well, what do you think you need help in, help with? And then the feedback that I'm getting from the assessments from teachers. So I knew that he needed extra help with physics in particular. So that's what we've done to help him 
um, to, to help him with the physics um, syllabus. Um, the school organizes that. One thing they know how to do well, any of these grammar schools, is they know how to organize exams. They know how to um, track um, attainment. They know how to spot underachievement very early and to intervene. Um, so they're experts in that. So um, uh, yeah, I've no concerns there. In terms of Mr. Cohn, he is very impressive, isn't he? He's very, very impressive, uh, very statesman-like. Um, yes, I think that his ethos does, you know, permeate through the school. Um, you can tell that everybody's on the same page at the school. Um, so they all have high expectations of all of the boys, not only in academia, but in terms of the people that they are growing, the young men they're growing, the people that they are um, growing into. Um, they want that to, the, the students to carry themselves, um, you know, with virtues, being kind and considerate and um, at Wilson's, their motto is yeah, so to to be serving, to give service. And that is something that they echo and repeat with us time and time again, that they want the boys to be of service. So I think, yes, um, the way that he runs his school, um, all the teachers are on board from what we can see as parents and from the evidence of the way the school is run. Um, I've had nothing but positive interactions with the school. Um, if there's any concerns, you can get in touch with somebody. Um, they're not as responsive as my son's independent school, but then, you know, it's different. I, I wouldn't expect them to be. Um, you do not have to do a lot of work regarding exams. Absolutely not. They do it all. OK, they do all of it, other than if your particular child has a little bit of a um, extra need. OK, um, is it the quality of teaching that breeds success or the fact you have motivated bunch of kids and families? My goodness, Monica, I mean, what a question. That's huge. <laughs> um, that's probably for another live. Yes, that's probably for another live. Um, what I would say is this. As a teacher. The grammar schools, um, I wouldn't say that, this might be controversial, I wouldn't say that the grammar schools have the best teachers. That's my own belief, and that's coming from a teacher perspective, a parent's perspective. And that's because, as I've, I've said here earlier, um, you're getting a cohort of students who are capable. All right, so the majority are capable and you might have some that need a little bit extra, but not the majority, okay? Um, you also are getting families that are working with the school that really have a kind of thinking that on one level they're in agreement, yes? So education is quite important and, you know, they want to do all that they can. So you're getting very involved parents or parents that would be involved. If you compare that to perhaps another school, you might be getting such a diverse cohort of parents and students that you have to, as a head, navigate that and a teaching body. But if you're in a school environment where you have a lot of social welfare issues to overcome, a lot of um, obstacles to overcome, and you still manage to get those children to pass exams or to get those children to pass those exams extremely well then really you have had to um hone some teaching skills and you've had to deploy some teaching skills i can teach a bright child it's not hard to teach a bright child okay i deliver that information they usually grasp the concept i can teach my plan okay but if i have to go into a classroom where i have to, a lot more to do than just teach then that's where it calls on a lot more as a teacher to deliver. So, yeah, I don't think it's all just down to, you know, quality teaching. They're, they're vying with the same pool of teachers that are available to every other state school and, te and teachers in the nation. Um, so I think it's much more to do with the cohort and how the school is run. That is crucial. The running of the school um, can make a big difference to the outcomes of the school. All right. 
Okay. Um, racial diversity, Kate? Um, well, the racial diversity, say for Wilson's, perhaps the Sutton schools, I really don't have data on that. I'm just, in terms of observing it with a naked eye, um, I'd say it's pretty cosmopolitan. I think it changes as well. It changes, it's changed over time as well, of course, as racial uh, diversity does change with demographics of the area and so on. So um, I'm not sure if the school holds that profile or that data, uh, but yeah, you have pretty much most races represented there. Um, it is really about aptitude to get into the school. It's a test. So um, it's a little bit more objective in terms of that. Um, you know, they can't kind of apply a bias other than an academic bias. Um, so yeah, I think that will, the, the diversity will move depending on the areas that you're in, okay, and the cohort. Um, okay, so Amol, we live in Uxbridge and we have to make a choice between Langley, Wilson's, Sun passed both exams. Can you advise any idea on Langley Grammar School? I don't know Langley Grammar School. Um, I, I can't comment on Langley Grammar School. But what I would say about um, what I would say about making the choice between your schools is something that I've said throughout this. Um, and we're coming to the end now, guys. Yeah, because Ty's probably going to kill me. <laughs> But yeah, all right. What I would say, and I'll repeat again, when you're making your choice for your schools, make it on the choice that where you see your child fit in. And that's going to have um, be based on what you see and what you know of the school. So if you can get in a forum where there are past parents or current parents, get in there and ask some questions about what is the school really like. Um, yeah, um, I think I've lost my steam here now. Um, what's the school really like? What do they have on offer? What is your child's interests? How easy is it to get to the school? Um, yeah, pretty much when you've got a choice of grammar schools, you know that the academics is taken care of pretty much. Okay, you know that they're going to get a good education there. You know that they know how to prepare children for Oxbridge. You know that they know how to work with... Um, high performing children, that's what they do well, okay? So you don't have any anxieties or you know concerns about that. So therefore look at all the other measures, okay? Okay, I think there are some other questions which are purely big questions. Um, we'll try and have a follow up or something where maybe I just go through some of those questions, okay? Um, I want to thank you all for joining in and I know Saba will have this recorded so people can go back and watch it. I'd like to thank Ty for joining in. He was a bit reluctant, but I managed to twist his arm. Um, and I want this also to just to be a message that when you're asking questions on the site, we're quite happy to share our identity, put a face to who we are. So don't feel frightened about putting your name. Um, I've spoken to lots of people who I've given my number, called me up just for advice. You know, we're pretty, we pretty want to give back. We want to help. We've been through the process, got experience tutoring children. So consistently going through the process. And if there's any way that we can help, it's a great platform to help each other. So reach out and don't hide. Don't be frightened. Nobody's going to be judging you. OK. All right. Goodbye, everybody. It's been great being part of this helpful um, platform. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>